Setting up a professional streaming rig seems difficult at first. It's intimidating. It might seem expensive. But with proper planning, a strategic budget, and some studying, you'll be surprised at how quickly you'll get professional results. Hi, I'm John Tendy, and thank you for visiting my channel. You don't need eight cameras for a multicam stream. You don't need four cameras. Start with two. But what you do need is a switcher that will allow you to add cameras as you learn and as you grow. Now, in the first video, we set up a basic yet effective, inexpensive streaming setup that connects directly to Facebook. In video two, we added a multi-track mixer and a single professional or semi-professional camera to your setup for a more polished look. Now, in this third and final video, we're not going to do a how-to or a setup video. We're going to discuss theory here because there are so many switchers and so many streaming products and more are popping up every day. It's like switcher madness. So no matter what I offer in these three videos, something new is going to come out tomorrow or maybe next week. So you're going to have to continue with your research. With the audio rig, we discussed various and sensible options in video two. Now, the first thing to note in this video most switchers have a reliable stereo audio input. They should. If they don't, don't buy it. Now, some of them are eighth inch stereo like the Roland, and some of them are dual eighth inch mono like the Blackmagic Mini. Some have XLR ballast like the higher end Blackmagic ATEM switchers. But the thing to remember is that the audio conversion is now taking place pre-CPU. It's embedded into the video stream. So compared to the last video, your computer's processor load is now cut in half, even though you've doubled, perhaps tripled, the amount of input gear. You're also freeing up one of your USB ports. This next thing is important. If your switcher has an eighth inch stereo input or two eighth inch mono inputs, tape those wires down because somebody will trip on the wire and damage the input jack. I guarantee it. You know who's gonna be the one to do that? You. So always have a roll of gaffer's tape handy and get good gaffer's tape. Don't go cheap. So should your switcher inputs be HDMI, SDI, or both? An SDI connection will give you a longer run than HDMI. SDI runs can go up to 100 meters. That's what, 328 feet. HDMI is limited to about 15 feet, right? Well, wrong. These little Manhattan HDMI extenders, they're designed to take a TV signal and boost it enough to add about 30 feet to the run. They're very common in security systems. Well, they'll also work with your camera's HDMI output. And for a 1080 signal, they require no power supply. And there are always new versions coming out. They're getting better and better. I use them all the time. Now, I'll get about an extra 40 feet out of them. And now that goes in between the two wires, so you get a run of 40 plus 15 feet, meaning a switcher with HDMI inputs will give you a combined left-right spread of 110 feet, 55 feet in each direction of the switcher. And camcorders with SDI outputs are much more expensive. There are HDMI to SDI converters. Don't make yourself crazy with that for now. For now, HDMI with an extender is fine. Now, I use a Blackmagic ATEM Studio HD, it has four HDMI ins and four SDI ins. So I do have the SDI option, and it also has XLR inputs. It costs more, but more features cost more money. But honestly, no one has ever walked through that door with an SDI-enabled camera. Let's talk about input scaling. This is very important. So pay attention. I'm going to slow down. Many switchers require scaling, meaning that every camera connected to your switcher has to have the same HDMI output setting or everything will go black. It's a math thing. So some semi-pro cameras, like Canon, do not have the HDMI versatility that others have and might create a real problem, like Canon. So for me, Sony is the most cooperative when it comes to HDMI settings by far. And here's some good news. Some of the newer switchers have built-in scaling, which means it automatically converts the input signal from your camera. You don't even have to worry about your HDMI setting. The switcher will accept it. The new Blackmagic Mini and the Mini Pro have built-in scaling, which for $299 and $599 is an amazing feature. Now, I still prefer my ATEM Television Studio HD, even though it doesn't have input scaling. For this room, it's just more versatile. It requires some knowledge, and setting up and troubleshooting on this unit is not for the beginner. Is your switcher stream ready? Now, usually a switcher has only an HDMI or an SDI output, which means it has to be converted into a USB signal in order to get it to your computer. The three converters that I discussed in video two will all do the job just fine. But 
the new Blackmagic Mini Switchers that were just announced have streaming built in. Now, I haven't tried it yet. They just came out. They're already on back order. But it's something to consider, and you should read up on it, and maybe something you might want to wait for. At $299, the entry-level version costs literally the same price as the Magewell converter, and it's only $150 more than the Elgato or the Blackmagic Ultra Studio converters. All reliable switchers have simple audio mixers built into them, software mixers. They allow you to add camera audio to your stream. Now, while I probably wouldn't rely on this as an audio rig, I prefer a mixer that I can grab with my hands, it can still be useful in a pinch or just as a simple backup audio system. So if something goes wrong with the audio feed, you can switch to camera audio in an emergency. Let's say you're hired to stream a boardroom meeting or a lecture hall, and they tell you in advance, please, we want you to use our audio gear. And you show up, and of course, their mixer doesn't work, or there's just no mixer there at all. Believe me, this happens all the time. In that situation, you switch to camera audio, maybe the camera's built-in mic, you'll save the day. Still, for me, my best recommendation, and the sensible thing to do, is to always have a small mixer with you, just in case, even if it's just four mic pre's. Now, most switchers also have chroma keying, picture-in-picture, -picture, text overlays, and they're all great features. For me, still, there's nothing like proper streaming software. And while they all claim to not need a computer, I highly recommend you get a separate laptop to control your switcher. I got an old 2000 MacBook Pro Dual Core 2.6 for 150 bucks. It does the job just fine. Here's a clip from a proper live stream we did just a few months ago with this setup. It's a jazz ensemble that did a live stream for that jazz show. <laughs> Please note the mixer for that live stream is a Personas Studio Live Series 3 board. That's what I need for this room because we do other levels of production here as well. But for streaming, you can get the same results with a Personas AR12C or an AR16C. In fact, for streaming, the AR series might be a better choice. It costs way less, and you really don't need all those features of a Series 3 for a live stream setup. So let's discuss budget for a two camera upgrade. Yes, we're gonna start with two cameras. You can add cameras as you grow. Don't go out tonight and buy four cameras, eight cameras, that's crazy. Two cameras with one camera operator will make your product look quite professional. So in our budget, except for the switcher and the software, we're gonna buy used. A mid-price switcher and a great choice, you can get the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro, 600 bucks. I recommend you get a dedicated laptop to run the switcher. Like I said before, dual core, 2015 iMac, 200 bucks used. Two semi-pro cameras with lenses, a used Sony A6000 kit and a camcorder, about $600 for both on eBay. Streaming software, Wirecast Studio is gonna hit you for 600 bucks. Main computer for streaming, quad core minimum recommended, $900 used. Editing software, you're going to want to prepare post-stream clips. Final Cut, Resolve Studio, either one, $400. HDMI to USB converter, the price varies. For now, let's just say $200. That's $3,500 total. That is a lot of money. And nobody has that kind of money right now. So wait, let's talk economics. Let's get strategic and let's figure this out. You probably have some of this gear already. Think about it. You're watching this video, so you already have the main computer. Take off 900 bucks. You've made it to the third video, so I'm going to assume you have at least one camera. Take off another $300. Streaming software. OBS is free. You don't like OBS? Neither do I. But it's free. Live with it for now. Or Wirecast will give you 30 days free. That's what I would do. Either way, at least for the first month, you can take off another 600 bucks. HDMI converter. There's already one built into the Blackmagic Pro. So if that's the switcher you choose, take off another 200 bucks. Editing software. If you have a Mac, you already have iMovie. Or better yet, 
DaVinci Resolve Beta runs on Mac and Windows. It's free, it's fantastic, and it's completely professional. It's also very advanced. There is a learning curve, and it will take a few weeks out of your life, but well worth the effort. Take off another 400 bucks. So now we've boned $2,400 off the budget. Net expense to go professional, $1,100. That's not a bad investment if you commit to putting in the time to practice and study. So here are my final thoughts. Most of my Facebook and YouTube followers are primarily in the audio end of the production game. I'll assume that you are too, as this series is clearly aimed at the audio community. You have the audio end of it covered. You have the mixer, you have the microphones, you have the knowledge. You can take that $1,100 and go out and buy that vintage compressor you've always wanted. I recommend you postpone that purchase. I've said it in a previous video and I'm gonna say it again. If you think you're going to continue making a living in an audio only environment, you're wrong. Those days are coming to an end. And if you're surprised by this, where have you been? Wishful thinking accomplishes nothing. Get the tools you need to broaden your menu, update your qualifications, go to YouTube University and learn some new software, develop some new skills. Now you don't have to go out and buy all this stuff tomorrow, but at least start studying. What better time than right now? We're all just sitting around in quarantine anyway. And in a month or two, when this pandemic is over, you'll be the one who's gonna pull out of the garage with a brand new paint job. You should be very excited about that. Thank you for watching this series, and if you like it, share it. Also, please give it a thumbs up. Like and follow Tendi Media on Facebook, and also check out That Jazz Show on Facebook as well. There are a lot of jazz videos and live streams coming right from this studio. So stay healthy, stay safe, remain inspired, and continue to be creative. I'm John Tendi, thank you for watching.